Last year, in 2020, the way that we live our lives was completely turned upside down. We were told that we're not allowed to go out, go to the gym, and for many of us even go to work. What this has resulted in is most of us moving our bodies way less than what we're used to. And many of us have noticed new aches and pains and other problems with our bodies. So what can we do about it? Well, one option is to sit back and wait for things to go back to the way they were before. I don't really like this option because history has taught us that time has a tendency to continue moving forwards and not go backwards, of course, unless your name is Benjamin Button. So I think the best option is to change what we're doing to suit what's going on right now and put us in the best position going forward into the future. That's why I'm here. I wanna show you a few tweaks that you can make to the way that you're sitting and the way that you're sleeping. It's very simple, but it's highly effective. And to understand why it's so effective and why it's so important, we need to understand a few key points. So the first concept we have to get our heads around is the fact that everything in the body is connected from head to toe, from top to bottom, inside and out. Now, I know there's a lot of you thinking, well, duh, that's obvious, you only have one body. But honestly, you'd be surprised what I get to hear every single day in my chiropractic clinic. <laughs> one of the first things I need to do to figure out what's going wrong with somebody is I wanna know a little bit more about their history. So I'm asking them questions about old accidents and old injuries. I basically wanna know what their body's been through, to figure out what's going wrong and why their problem just won't go away by itself. So typically, I see lots of people coming in with lower back pain, neck pain, or something similar, and I'll ask them these questions. And one of the main answers I'll get is something like, well, you know what, I did actually injure my knee. It was quite bad, actually, but that was so many years ago. Uh, I don't really think that one's relevant anymore. Or they'll say something like, you know what, actually, yeah, I do remember. I had a car accident. It was really bad, actually, but I didn't have any injuries or pain afterwards, so I think I'm okay. I don't think that one's related. And they don't even realize that they've just given me the opportunity to use my favorite phrase again. Everything is connected. Let's say you were to injure your knee, and for three to six weeks after that injury, you're unable to put weight on that knee fully that's gonna be three to six weeks of you twisting your body to try and take pressure off of that knee. That's certainly gonna have an impact on other parts of your body, like the ankle, the hip, your lower back, or somewhere else. In 2019, in the NBA playoff finals, Clay Thompson, one of the greatest shooters of all time, a member of the Golden State Warriors, had a season ending injury when he tore his right ACL. Now, it's a horrible thing, incredible amounts of pain. He spent the next year and a half or so going through surgery, rehabilitation, and basically trying to build his body back up to the point where he could play again. And he got there. Only just before the start of the season, guess what happened? He tore his Achilles on the opposite leg. Now, is this a coincidence? Or is it that his body was compensating all that time and eventually reached its breaking point, the threshold where it couldn't take anymore? I know what I'm thinking. Everything is connected. That's three times for you. The human body physically and the mind and the emotions are also very intimately connected. I remember when I was growing up, I used to do track and field at a pretty decent level. There were times when I would find myself in the top 10 in the UK, okay, <coughs> for my age group. And I was a long jumper. So as I'm sure you can imagine, the training involves a lot of running at high speeds and a lot of jumping, both of which are very difficult to do when you have a lower back pain. So I was about 14, 15, going into my GCSE years, and I've got this annoying lower back pain that won't go away. The reason why it was so annoying is because it wouldn't affect me in trying to speed up. 
It was actually when I was trying to slow down and put the brakes on that this thing would hurt and it was annoying. So at the start of the session, I was absolutely fine. But as the session went on and I was doing more and more reps, the pain would start to build and feel worse and worse. So I was going into school every single day, pissed off at the entire world, and it was affecting my relationships with my teachers, my fellow students, and even my family at times, I have to admit. And my grades at the time were actually reflecting the way that my body was feeling. Luckily, I found a chiropractor who actually helped me with the pain. And once the pain was gone, everything went back to normal. But I know that I'm not the only one who has felt like this. Even to this day, when I have pain, I become a horrible person. <laughs> and my better half, Tanya, she'll be able to confirm this to be true that I have no patience, I have less motivation to get up in the morning, and my energy just feels low in general. I know I'm not the only one who feels like this. We all do, and it's absolutely natural. The reason being that your physical body is intimately connected with your emotions and how your mind works. Like I said, everything is connected even inside to out. The second point that I'm going to argue is that the spine is the most important part of your body. I know I'm a chiropractor, so I may be a little bit biased, but just hear me out for a second on this one, okay? So around four to 12 million years ago, humans started to evolve to be able to walk on two legs. And the difference between us and the other primates is that we can do all of our movements on two legs, whether we're walking or running. You'll notice that other animals now, like monkeys, they will actually use their arms to be able to move more quickly when they're running, for example. So they'll do some movements on two legs, but they'll actually use all four limbs to be able to do a lot of their movements too. In more recent history, all of us started off as two individual cells which found each other lovingly inside the womb. Now, those cells started to divide and multiply over and over again. And eventually, after about nine months, they form this fantastically complex and very unique combination of around 37 trillion cells, which is what makes you you. Within the first 20 days after fertilization, so after these two cells have met each other in the womb, your spine, your brain, and your nervous system are pretty much fully formed. A few days later is when the heart is actually going to start beating and working. So yes, I would argue that the spinal column is actually more important for the human body than the heart itself. Otherwise, why would it be there first? Back pain is extremely common, even more so in the last year, in my experience. But the numbers don't lie. So let me throw some at you now. And of course, different people will experience different levels of severity of pain, but back pain is the number one leading cause of disability in the UK, with lower back pain in particular accounting for around 11% of the total disability population. That costs the economy around £500 million every single year, which, yes, is your taxpayer money. And one in five people will have to go and see their doctor every single year because of some kind of musculoskeletal problem. That number is actually even higher in the adult working population. So what this tells me is that it's something likely all of us will have to deal with at some point. So wouldn't it be much better if we knew why it was happening so we could know what to do about it? Of course it would. So let's keep this super simple. I just want you to remember these three things. Number one, when it comes to the human body, the structure is gonna determine the function. That's gonna be from a macro all the way down to a micro level. Yes, even the chemistry in your body is gonna be determined by the mechanics of individual molecules and atoms fitting together to create an effect. Number two, the body is self-healing and self-correcting to an extent. The, yeah, the body is intelligent, so it can fix a lot of things for itself, but there's also some things which it can't fix for itself. 
And as long as your body is alive, it will try everything that it can to be able to better itself. Point number three is probably the most important one. So you might actually wanna get out your pen and paper and write this one down. When it comes to the bone structure of the body, the thing that you can't fix for yourself is when a bone goes out of place in a direction that there's no muscles or combination of muscles that can pull that bone to replace it back into its optimal position. It just makes logical sense, right? There's two things that we all do every single day and night which can potentially put your body in a bad position. I'm talking about the way that we're sitting and the way that we're sleeping. We do both of these things for about six to eight hours every single day. So together that makes up about two thirds of your 24 hour day. So it's very important to be doing these two things really well. Everybody remembers the story of Goldilocks and the three bears, right? Well, just for a moment, I want us to all forget about the fact that this young lady was committing multiple crimes. When she broke into the bear's family home, ate their food, used their stuff before escaping out the window and fleeing the police resisting arrest. This is how I remember the story. She sat in the first chair, which was too hard. It was uncomfortable and she felt like she had to wiggle around to get comfy. She couldn't sit there for long periods of time. She then sat in the second chair, which was too soft. And this was uncomfortable, but in a completely different way. She felt like she was slumping. She then sat in the third chair and it felt just right. Now, we do actually have a sweet spot when it comes to sitting, which is gonna keep your spine in its most optimal conditions, maintaining those curves that we talked about earlier on. And it looks a little bit like this. You'll notice how the top of the knee is slightly lower than the hip. You'll notice that the pelvis as a whole is got a slightly forward tilt to its position. That's what allows you to maintain the curve in your lower back. And you'll also notice that the screen, the top of the screen is at or slightly above your eye level. Sitting like this is gonna allow your body, like I said, to maintain its natural curves. So it will stay upright without you having to try or put in any effort whatsoever. So you can sit for long periods of time without having that nagging, achy feeling where it feels like you have to roll your shoulders like this or try and stretch out your neck like this. If you're sitting in a seat which is too soft, the opposite is gonna happen. Your pelvis is gonna tilt backwards and it's gonna reduce that curve in your lower back, forcing you into a slump position. And this is ultimately why sitting on your sofa or sitting on your bed for long periods of time is usually gonna have you feeling different and new aches and stiffness when you stand up. So then Goldilocks went to go upstairs to lie down in bed. I'm assuming that she was tired from all of the trespassing that she was doing, I'm not sure. She slept in the first bed. The pillow was too high, it was uncomfortable for her. She couldn't get to sleep. She slept in the second bed, the pillow was too low. Again, it was uncomfortable, but in a completely different way. Couldn't get to sleep again. Then she went to sleep in the third bed and the pillow was just the right height. She fell asleep so fast and so deeply that she was there when the bears got home and that's how they caught her red-handed before she escaped out the window. Again, when it comes to sleeping, you're looking for that sweet spot. The height of the pillow is gonna be the thing which allows your spine, especially your neck, to stay in a neutral position. Now, when your spine is in a neutral position, your nervous system and your brain are able to relax and unwind, and that's how you get your nice deep sleep. If your pillow is too low for you, you'll notice that your body during the night will want to roll forwards. And it might stay there for a while before rolling onto the opposite side and it might toss and turn throughout the night throughout those three different positions. If the pillow's too high, then your body is gonna roll backwards. And yes, your body is literally that intelligent that it's gonna try and fix itself, even when you're asleep, completely subconsciously. To summarize, the most important things is finding the sweet spot when you're sitting and when you're sleeping, just like Goldilocks did, 
Now, I know there's some of you out there thinking there was a third thing that Goldilocks did when she ate the porridge of the bears. And maybe we'll talk about nutrition next time. Thank you.